Man, you remember when Beast used to be the king of live-action superhero movies? But it was Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, the original Superman series, or even the classic Batman series. DC was killing it with the film department. Well, regardless of a few blunders here and there, didn't stray out of nowhere. Marvel came back with a fury, get it? And started owning the box office, one to two movies per year, raking in millions. No, billions. And for the most part, being critically acclaimed. And with Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy ending, DC had to do something and fast. So they actually decided to have their own cinematic universe. I've already reviewed all of the movies so far, so I'll just act out what my reaction was to you guys as each movie came out. Huh, I mean, that's not bad, but it could have been bad. Oh my god! Get it off! Get it off! Where are these writers doing? Oh, stop! Make it stop! No! Oh, hey. Um, that's not bad. Oh, hey, that's, uh, never mind, that's actually pretty good. Oh, uh, I mean, it's not bad, but there's a lot of wasted potential here. Haven't seen it. Oh, hey, good job, DC. So yeah, the DCEU is a mixed bag. Man of Steel and Justice League was alright, Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad was terrible, and Wonder Woman and Shazam are pretty decent. Overall, the DCEU is pretty messy right now. I would personally have more faith in the DCEU if Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad hadn't ruined so many fascinating character arcs that have potential to be gold in the future. It got so bad that Suicide Squad somehow ruined this universe's Joker for me. It's the freaking Joker! He's like the easiest character to get right! How do you screw that up? Not only that, but there's a lot of messy things happening behind the scenes, such as Ben Affleck might be quitting the role of Bruce Wayne, rumor rumors that Superman might be replaced with Michael B. Jordan, and leaks Edward from Twilight will replace Ben as Batman. I'm confident the actor who played Edward would do a good job, even though every time he's on screen I'd be expecting Bella to pop out of nowhere and for the two to have to rub their faces together awkwardly while exchanging dialogue that's five times more toxic than dialogue shared between Anakin and Padme in episode 2 of Star Wars. But anyways, so it's no wonder that the DCEU is in a tough position. But who knows, maybe the MCU is having problems with their own- Thanos is such an amazing antagonist! If any wars in it will go down in the history of cinema, Endgame is not the highest grossing movie of all time! And no, I'm not a Marvel fan. I actually prefer DC's universe, even though I love Iron Man and Spider-Man to death. But who knows, maybe it's because I'm too much of a Batman fanboy. The thing to take away here is that I actually care about the DCEU. I actually think the writers are learning their lesson on making better movies like Wonder Woman and Shazam, and movies mixed with, uh, with mixed reception like Aquaman and Justice League. However, I really want to dive in and take a quick look at what problems the DCEU is currently facing, um, and how they can improve the cinematic universe in the future. Um, so without further ado, let's begin. So, I actually only have two major issues with the DCEU that I want to discuss. The first one is um, the build-up. So when discussing the DCEU, making comparisons with the MCU is kind of inevitable, so just bear with me. In the first Avengers movie, there's not a single new character introduced. Every character has already been built up or established in previous movies. Not only did that give the writers more time to develop the plot, but that upped the stakes since we already know and care for each character. Not only did Justice League have to focus on telling a good narrative, but they were tasked with having to set up Flash, Aquaman, Cyborg, and the main antagonist all at once. This led to the movie feeling rushed in some areas, most people forgetting Steppenwolf's name, whereas villains like Loki, Ultron, and especially Thanos won't be forgotten about anytime soon. This problem could have easily been avoided if the DCEU took its time to create its universe. It's simple, just make Man of Steel, then a Batman movie, then Wonder Woman, THEN a Batman v Superman movie, then Aquaman, then a Flash movie, then a Cyborg movie, then Suicide Squad, and THAT'S when you make Justice League. Imagine how cool it would be if throughout all of these standalone superhero movies, other heroes or even other villains made occasional appearances that would help make the universe more lively and active before a major crossover like the Justice League happened. In fact, Imagine how cool it would be if Suicide Squad renewed each of the villains from movies prior, thus making a crossover way more eventful. Plus, we'd also uh, care about all the characters more, since we all know them from in their individual movies, and have a better understanding of them. And yes, I know most people are familiar with these heroes and villains, so we already have a good idea on how the character acts and thinks. That's true, but I'd like to make an analogy real quick that has spoilers from Endgame. I know the movie has been uh, out for a while, but if you haven't seen it yet, skip to this timestamp to avoid major spoilers. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 
At the end of Endgame when Iron Man died, my, uh, my entire theater was sobbing. I've seen many movies in theaters, and the closest I've seen an entire theater cry was at the end of The Amazing Spider-Man 2. But even then, there was like one or two sniffles. Now, uh, the people cry at the end of Endgame because they remember that one time in Avengers Assemble when Tony fought Ultron, or that time in that one comic issue when he did something cool, or in Lego Marvel Super Heroes when he helped fight that one bad guy. No, they cried because they got to know this Tony Stark. They cried because they were actually attached to the character, not because they felt like they were supposed to be. Imagine if Batman died at the end of Justice League. Sure, it'd be sad, but there'd be uh, some emotionally sensitive people who'd probably cry, but most people wouldn't because we barely know anything about this Batman. There's no loopholes when it comes to character development. You have to build him or her up in order to win the audience. All I'm trying to say is with more build-up and setup, the DCEU's universe would feel so much more authentic. This is my final complaint, but this complaint is an issue, especially in Suicide Squad. Most of the DCEU's movies try too hard to appeal to fans of the MCU by having forced fan service or having forced humor. Stop. I didn't buy a ticket to Suicide Squad so I can watch an MCU movie. I did so because I want to watch Suicide Squad. Stop trying to be mainstream and just focus on telling a good narrative. Humor or no humor, this is your choice, but when it's forced, it really does hurt the flow of the movie. The DCEU is not beyond repair, as most people would say. If you remember, the, D the MCU didn't exactly start off with strong movies aside from both Iron Man's and the first Avengers, if you count that as being an early one. Um, so, and look at it now. So, I think the DCEU handles its universe, if it handles its universe more carefully, they can craft a good cinematic universe. Until then, however, we're going to have to continue relying on Marvel for guaranteed good superhero movies. I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, this little analogy on DCEU's universe. Um, if you're wondering what DCEU stands for, it stands for DC Extended Universe. But yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time. Peace, everyone.